Aminoglycoside antibiotics are the most widely used antibiotic. Their usage is popular in spite of their onotoxicity, meaning that they can enter the inner ear and cause the sensory hair cells to die. The resulting hearing loss is permanent. Stanford Initiative to Cure Hearing Loss researchers feel strongly that a patient should not have to suffer the lifelong effects of these critical treatments. They are therefore working diligently to develop new compounds which would retain their antimicrobial properties but lose their toxicity to the ear. I'm Bart Faber. This is my wife, Elizabeth Burns, and my 11-year-old son, Bryce Faber. Bryce was uh, diagnosed when he was two and a half on Christmas Eve of 2002 with a very bad cancer called neuroblastoma. He had surgery to remove his tumor where he was in intensive care for almost a week, came out of intensive care and immediately started another round of chemo. He went into stem cell transplant. And it's during that time that he got drugs, heavy doses of aminoglycosides, uh, which are an antibiotic, uh, trying to fight any infections and keep him alive. Uh, it's a true, truly near-death experience. When he came out of stem cell transplant, we knew that based on the amount of drugs that he'd been given, he would have significant hearing loss. What I remember is just coming out of treatment, not being able to hear anything, and I said to my mom, why have other people stopped talking? It was just my hope that he would have some hearing. And we're fortunate. Uh, he does have some hearing. He has about 10% of normal hearing. He misses all of the nuances of sound. When you hear the birds sing, walk on gravel, uh, hear the rustle of the breeze in the trees, he can sometimes hear the crashing of waves if the sound's deep enough. But the subtlety and richness of life is really missing in terms of hearing. What would it mean to, to you to have a cure? Well, I, I, I don't know, just change my life. I, I mean, it, it would just be like, like a 10-ton ton weight just lifted off your shoulders. We, we've just finished a tour of the labs, and I'm, I'm a very research-oriented person. Uh, when, he, when we discovered he had cancer, I spent a long time finding the place where he had the best chance to live. And I've spent a long time doing the research on where they're working on curing hearing loss. And Stanford stands head and shoulders above anything else that's out there uh, in the United States or abroad. It's the only place that I've seen that has really brought together a critical mass of people. Other places have individuals, but real breakthroughs are made where you have the critical mass and the community of people working on the problem. A single approach is not, not going to provide us a solution. What will provide us a solution is a multi-pronged approach like Stanford's implementing. And I just have to admire the university so much for investing so much money already in this project that's really so important to my son and his quality of life going forward. That's what you want for your kids is the best. And that's why I'm hoping so much that over the next decade, when he's 21, <laughs> We're going to cure this problem. It certainly seems within reach to me. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.